Hola, mi nombre es Daria, soy una científica en biología reproductiva y trabajo en Colossal Biosciences. Estoy muy emocionada de presentarle el siguiente video, donde les demuestro cómo extraer ADN de la saliva de Meperita Jolín. Les doy un recorrido en el laboratorio donde trabajo, cómo preservamos los gametos con los que trabajamos y juegos donde ustedes aprenderán acerca de los lobos y sus genes. Espero disfrutan esta lección. Life on planet Earth can look pretty different depending on where you are. This incredible variety of life is called biodiversity. It's all the different types of living things on our amazing planet. Did you know scientists have identified more than 2 million different species? Every species is unique and beautiful. Even the creepy crawly, spiky scaly, goofy spitty ones. And our planet needs all of them. This diversity of wildlife keeps our planet healthy. Things like climate change, pollution, overhunting, and disease can drastically change an ecosystem. And those changes directly impact wildlife. We already lost species like the megalodon, woolly mammoth, the dodo bird, and the thylacine. We don't want to lose any more. Hi there, my name is Daria. I'm a conservationist, biologist, and wildlife superfan. Here are five facts about me. My favorite animals are alpacas, and wolves, and sloths, and wombats. I taught myself to crochet animals. I'm a first-generation American. I was born in the US. My parents were born in South America and the Middle East. And because of that, I speak Spanish fluently. ¿Cuál es tu animal favorito? And when I was a kid, my nickname was Mouse because of how much I love cheese. I always knew I wanted to work with and help animals. Originally, I wanted to be a veterinarian, but I ended up studying to be a reproductive biologist, which means I use science to help increase populations of endangered species. And while I'm not a vet, all of my work is about helping animals. My work mostly happens here in the lab, but I work really closely with a team of scientists, conservationists, and researchers all over the world. They work directly with wildlife, like these African elephants. Sometimes an endangered species can have a hard time increasing their numbers, meaning they have trouble reproducing. It might be because of disease or environmental factors. Part of reproductive biology involves fertilizing eggs in the lab, generating embryos, and then working with our field team to help a female get pregnant. In addition to helping elephants, we also work with other endangered species, like rhinos, birds, marsupials like the northern quoll, and one of my favorite species, wolves. There are two types of wolves, the gray wolf and the red wolf. Gray wolves are larger and are found in North America and Europe. The red wolf is the most endangered wolf in the world. There are hardly any left in the wild, and they're only found along the coast of North Carolina. Scientists are breeding red wolves in zoos and other facilities, and then releasing them into the wild in hopes to boost their numbers. Let's see what you know about wolves. You've probably heard fairy tales about the big bad wolf, but is there any truth in those stories? It's time for some wolf myth busting. Shout out true or false. First question, wolves like to hunt people, true or false? False, wolves are shy and fearful of humans and more interested in staying away from people. Next question, wolves live and hunt alone, true or false? False, wolves live in packs and their territory covers hundreds of miles. The largest pack ever reported was a pack of 30 gray wolves in Yellowstone National Park. Let's see about this one. Werewolves are real, true or false? False, sorry Teen Wolf. Wolves are born blind and deaf, true or false? True, after about two to three weeks, they open their eyes and they can hear and begin to explore their world. Okay, last question. Wolves love to howl at the moon, true or false? False. They do communicate with each other through howling, but not to the moon. Wolves are apex predators, which means that they're at the top of the food chain, and they don't have any natural predators. 
In an ecosystem with a healthy biodiversity, there's a balance between predator and prey. If the number gets too high or too low, it impacts the entire ecosystem. Wolves are also a keystone species. This means that they're essential to the health of the entire ecosystem. If a keystone species goes extinct, the entire ecosystem will suffer. Tens of thousands of years ago, when humans hunted and gathered their food, they had to protect themselves from wolves. Wolves can be dangerous if they feel threatened or are fighting for the same food. This is where some of the myths and fairy tales about wolves came from. We think wolves were attracted to food scraps humans left behind. And as humans began to live in communities, some of the wolves stayed near them and started to live amongst them. It was mutually beneficial. The wolves got food scraps and they alerted the humans to other predators. Over time, humans began to breed with wolves, selecting the ones who were less aggressive and more sociable. And over many, many thousands of years of selective breeding, the wolves living with the humans evolved into these guys. That's right, these goofy, lovable pets that some of us call family are direct descendants of wolves. You might say it's survival of the friendliest. They look really different from their wolf ancestors, especially this one. But dogs are still very closely related to wolves and share nearly 99% of the same makeup. And no, I don't mean eyeshadow and lipstick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've got it, you've got it, my dog's got it. In fact, all living things have it, including the tiniest microorganisms. It's called deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA for short. DNA is a molecule that carries a genetic code, or makeup, unique to every individual living thing. We all have DNA, but it's different for each of us. We inherit genes from our parents, and the genes in DNA determine our traits, what we look like. Look around. How many people have the exact same hair as you? What about eye color? Some of us share similar traits. Does anyone have the same fingerprints as you? Nope, those are unique to just you. Remember how I said dogs and wolves are closely related? Most of a dog's genetic code is very similar to a wolf's. What traits do you see that dogs and wolves have in common? They both have fur, they both have four legs. You can't see it, but they both have a keen sense of smell. They're different in some ways too. Dogs bark, wolves don't bark. They howl and make other vocalizations, but it's not barking. We can learn so much from studying genetics. Genetic science can tell us if a species is susceptible to certain diseases and disorders. Some dog breeds, like French Bulldogs, were genetically bred to have squished up snouts. Unfortunately, this trait constricts their airways and can cause breathing problems. Genetic diversity is a range of inherited traits within a species. Healthy species that aren't endangered have a high genetic diversity, and diversity is good. When we scientifically introduce genetic diversity into an endangered species, we can help the population overcome infertility and build up their population. If you want to see how it works, follow me. I want to show you where the magic happens in the lab. Most of my work happens here in the laboratory, and as you can see, it's very bright in here. This is also a very clean space, so we have to keep our equipment organized and sterile. We use specialized equipment to extract and study DNA, but I'm gonna show you how to extract DNA right at home or in your classroom using these everyday items. And for that, I have a friend I want to introduce you to. You might have heard about people testing their dog's DNA to find out what breed they are. And while we're not gonna do something that sophisticated today, I am gonna show you how to extract DNA in an easy way that you can do right at home or in your classroom. First, you're gonna need a sample. You could use something like a strawberry or a blueberry to extract DNA from, but today I'm gonna use my dog's saliva because guess what? There's DNA in drool. Come here, Jolene, come here. <laughs> Jolene, come. Come here, girl. So this is my dog, Jolene. And lucky for us, she's a super drooler and makes this a lot easier to get a sample from. You're gonna wanna grab about a teaspoon of drool. And luckily, since she drools really easy, we're just gonna go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanna use just a spoon or a cup, just go gently along the corner of their mouth and collect some drool. It's that simple. Good girl, it's a good girl. Would you like to see Jolene's DNA? 
Here in the lab, we use much more high-tech ways of isolating DNA samples, but I can show you a very quick technique that uses simple ingredients you probably have at home. Dish soap, salt, rubbing alcohol, and a toothpick. Here's Jolene's drool, and I'm gonna put it into this clear dish so you can see. <laughs> First, I'm gonna add dish soap to it. You're gonna to wanna to add the same amount of dish soap as drool. This part will start breaking down the cells that are in her drool. Next, I'm gonna add about a pinch of salt. The salt helps the DNA molecules clump together so they'll be easier to see. Then I'm gonna let it sit for just a minute. Finally, I'm gonna carefully pour some of this rubbing alcohol into the dish and see what happens. DNA is a long stringy molecule. Do you see it? I'm gonna use this toothpick to show you how stringy it is and how the DNA molecules clump together. It's pretty cool, right? What you just saw is similar to how we collect genetic samples in the wild. We can use saliva, tissue, or feathers from endangered species like this Mauritius pink pigeon to study their DNA. The more we understand about endangered species genetic diversity and health, the more we can do to help save them. It's even possible to collect DNA from bones or fossils. This means that if scientists can find a good preserved DNA sample, they can study the genes of a species that no longer exists on Earth. Unfortunately, that's not something you can study with household products. You need tools with a little bit more power. To see more of the cool tools we use in the lab, keep watching.